It's Monday and time for the auto racing results recap and an additional shakedown thought to challenge your auto racing thinking. But before we start, reading some of the recent comments, I feel like we need to recap something else first. As Drive gets more popular and Shakedown gets new viewers, it may be time to remind this new audience exactly what Shakedown is. This show is about auto racing and some bike racing too. We do information, insights, opinions, attitudes, not the typical racing PR spew, and not just pretty race car prawn pictures. Actual thoughts and ideas to help you understand WTF is going on in racing and the OMFG moments to make you think a bit about your own likes, dislikes, and opinions about racing. The race car prawn? Well, that's why we created Trackside. So fire up and watch the pretty race cars go by. It is cool, but it's only part of the story. Shakedown is here to explain how, why, and what those bright lights, bright colors, and pretty sounds are all about. For the most part, Shakedown is built as a studio show. Yes, we get out to the tracks and races sometimes, like giving you a drive Shakedown look at the Sebring 12, the Daytona 24, the Long Beach GP, Petit Le Mans, the Le Mans 24, and now coming up soon, our annual live stream viewing party this year, June 16th and 17th, and of course, the Nürburgring 24. That show kicked off the Drive channel back in January. Over 70,000 subscribers and almost 9 million views later, we're still here. Shakedown has done interviews with many racers as well. Alan McNish, Sebastian Vettel, and a ton more. Plus with the racing pros that make the cars go. The engineers, team owners, crew guys, team managers. In all, many, many interviews. We've also driven cars and shared those experiences. The Riley Mark 22 and Palatov track cars. The Gumpert Apollo for Alex Roy. Boss 302, GTR, the Nismo Z, Cadillac CTSV, and more cars coming soon here in 2012. And we've created Shakedown University to help you teach, to help teach you racing skills, driving techniques, and this year, track notes to get you around some of the great tracks a bit faster. We've already shared Sebring and Long Beach. The Boss 302 drive gave you a bit of Laguna Seca, Palatov, Sears Point and Finian, and again, more is coming. But as I said, most Monday and Friday Shakedown shows are studio shows. We're not Chris Harris or JF Musil with his new driven factory tours or Matt Farrow, or Mike Musto, or Wes Seiler and Grant Ray on their bikes, or Alex Roy, always out on the road driving. Shakedown is here, and I work my magic with words, thoughts, and ideas. Not just burnouts, broad slides, and engine blasts. And when I am on the road, at the track, we'll do our best to make those deals super special. In the meantime, Shakedown will try to arm you with info so that if you actually open your mouth to friends or type to comment online about racing, you might not sound like a moron or a subscriber from a typical car magazine, or a Speed TV viewer. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, back with the racing news in a second. VLN, DTM, WRC, WTCC, WC. Geez, enough of the acronyms. Plus MotoGP, Porsche Cup, and a question for you based on some comments from the Friday, April 27th, Lamborghini Should Race More Shakedown Show. Start with VLN. I'm still not pronouncing that name. But I am pronouncing the winners after their four hour battle of the Nürburgring, which by the way, gets you only 26 race laps of the place. So experience matters, and it's a big part of why, once again, a Manfei Racing Prep Porsche 911 GT3R won another Nordschleife race. They've only won five of the last six Nürburgring 24 races, and this was a tune up for the 2012 Round the Clocker, this year running May 19th and 20. McLaren finished P6 overall, Aston P10, Lexus LFA P12, but P1 in his class. Toyota 86s did not win their class, maybe too much drifting. A Honda Civic R beat them. Full results is in a link in the description below. Let's go on to DTM, German Touring Cars. Race one with the new specs that we've discussed in earlier shakedown shows. Audi looks strong with the pole position. BMW showed speed that said the new guys would not be the last guys but it was Mercedes that won the race, finishing 1-2. Audi was P3, best BMW was P6. WRC, rally cars in Argentina. Ford made a big deal about reaching 150 straight rallies, scoring points, the first manufacturer to do that in the 39 year history of WRC. But it didn't soften the wounds of a Citroën winning the rally, with Seb Loeb leading a 1-2 finish for the French. And there was a final stage DNF for Danny Sordo, Ford's one-off pilot, missing a sure podium with the worst of reasons for a car maker, an engine failure. <laughs> oh, 150 points paying rallies for Ford? 
but 70 WRC wins for Loeb, and he's just one guy. How many people work and race for Ford Motorsport? Moving on to WTCC World Touring Cars, Sayat finally got a race win, a 1-2 finish for the Leones. But by race two in Slovakia, Chevy Cruze was back on top with her own 1-2. And Lada, I was wrong last weekend. Lada is not racing until this event at the Hungaro Ring this weekend. In MotoGP in Spain, Casey Stoner and Honda took the home country race win opportunity away from Spaniards Orde Lorenzo and Danny Pedrosa. MotoGP races on Bridgestones, and guess what? Tire degradation made the difference here too. Lorenzo was on a softer front tire and lost feel, grip, and consistent speed. Stoner managed his tires. So when Orge made his final push, Stoner had the tire to hold the Yamaha off, broke out a gap, and held on for the win. In America, in Utah, we had the World Challenge Series. They race on Pirelli, but tire degradation was not an issue in the three classes of racing. Pat Long did another guest drive and won GT. Camaro won GTS. And in the touring car race, if you haven't read it elsewhere by now, Tristan Herbert took his VW Jetta GLI from the back of the grid to a race win. But it was his borrowed VW Beetle turbo streetcar engine that crossed the finish line first. See, Herbert popped his race motor, borrowed the Beetle engine from a fan's car, and got the job done. Now, I heard the same story from Chaparral legend Jim Hall when he said he did that with one of his early Lister race cars at a 1950s race. But Hall swapped the Chevy engine from his pickup truck tow vehicle and won. So Herbert, good on you, but no big deal. Been there, done that. I'm joking, that was all cool. Oh, an entry-level B-spec race, I think for the first time. The Porsche IMSA GT3 Cup Challenge by Yokohama Series also raced in Utah this past weekend. Two races, and in both, Madison Snow beat Sean Johnston and Bryce Miller to the line in the Platinum class. Same podium, both races. In gold class, mom Melanie Snow joined her son on the victory stand. In race two, Angel Benitez Jr. returned to gold P1. So now Angel has taken three of the first four gold races. Drive, as you may recall, carries the Porsche Cup race videos. Miller Motorsport Park was not a race with track cameras, so we were not there. Laguna Seca is next on the Porsche Cup schedule, and we will have a video report to share from there. Okay, let's get to my question of the show for you guys. Because I warned you, here on Shakedown, sometimes there's actual thinking required of you viewers. Oops, I just lost four commenters I know, but reading their crap, I'm not too torn up about it. For the rest of you, last Friday's Shakedown asked, should Lambo race more to cover up its cred as it goes off and builds non-sports car SUVs? And the comments opened my eyes to something. No, not Signore Lambos, we don't need to race tradition. FYI, I knew and respected all that, but X'd it out of my mind because Audi owns the damn place now, the world is different now, and I have my own opinion. No, the comments that got my attention dismissed racing as not real, being too political, manipulated, and not authentic to any validation of anything automotive anymore. And I've seen such comments before from non-racing, but car-loving enthusiast audiences too. They love cars, but not racing because then you know the drill. And I've been in meetings where I feel racing is seen as niche, been in meetings where car is seen as niche versus other lifestyle interests. So Shakedown viewers, expand your thoughts and opinions on this. Is racing's real problem that they've lost credibility? You know, race fans seem to see the failure of the sport versus politics versus marketing. Mainstream people only see the stupid stuff from racing. Political fights, series to series, Bahrain road trips into the world controversy just for money, crashes and dead racers. And yet, internally, in racing here, we're myopically debating titanic deck chair issues like technical details, IndyCar's ugly, and Danica takes her hands off the steering wheel in a race car, oh my. I think you guys may like drifting, because the cars to you are honestly built race cars. And my anti-Chris Harris snarks aside, drifting is a really tough driving skill. But F1 is magic wings, push buttons and cheating, NASCAR's the show, etc., etc. All with you, it's all managed results, artificial performance factors, blah, 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 blah. So again, the question to you, has racing lost its credibility as a true expression, true expression of automotive performance or not? So please stop, think, and comment. I can't wait to read. And if I've dropped too far off the intellectual rev band for you, stay tuned. Carpron is still alive on drive. Just click to the next video. Oh, and one more thing. Thanks, Adam Ferrara, for inviting us to your show at the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Spending some time with us and sharing the stage with Derek D, who did an opening act set. 
Ferrara blends stories of his Italian family, his inherited from his dad love of cars, and the wife thing and more. It's all good, and it gives us lessons learned from life into one big, oh my God, I shared that feeling comedically with you. His rants on why am I so angry were like from straight inside my head. How's he do that? And when you ask him about how he does what he does on stage, he describes it all in car driving terms. And it really was a fun night. And by the way, the Gotham Comedy Club is owned by another Italian guy who also has a web biz called buildandsearch.com. It's a one-stop site to find cool cars and parts. And they're giving away a restored 1968 427 cubic inch big block Corvette Stingray to launch the whole deal. So let's see, we got Ferrara DeAngelis Mazzilli, the club owner slash buildandsearch.com guy and me. Let's just say any of you messing with Ferrara and questioning his bits on Top Gear USA, you may want to reconsider. He's a car guy like you. And with all these Italians, you know, things can happen. Not that I'm saying they will, but sometimes they do. And your respect is a good way to uh, not let things happen, if you know what I mean.